made with support from Eunice. A butter world. Better world, idiot. Seven types of bonding. Let's see if we can do this without too much frustration. Kicking off with ionic bonding. Well, those are ions up there, positive and negative ions. Normally the metals are positive, non-metals are negative. Strong sort of bond, there was that tough guy right in there. And you can see that they're arranged in a neat regular pattern, that's called a lattice. Now people mistakenly think that ionic bonds are unidirectional, but they are not. So that model there is wrong with those two I'm playing with. They are omnidirectional. The bond goes in all directions. And like I said, it's very strong. It's hard to pull individual ions out of the lattice. In fact, I'm getting a little bit frustrated. Okay, on to covalent bonding. Another intramolecular bond within the molecule. It's strong. Like tough guys. Oh, who's, who's that in there? Ah. Uh... Dr. Atkinson, there he is. So covalent bonds, co means together, valent means valence electrons. So you've got to put the valence electrons together. Let's pretend these are two hydrogen atoms. That's the orbiting electron and the central proton in the middle. Now, if I bring those together, then I can, uh, if I bring the, those atoms together, then the electrons are going to want to pair up and be shared in the middle. Now each atom thinks it has a full outer shell and you've just made an H2 molecule, a hydrogen molecule. The outer shell most always is full in this situation. The third intramolecular force is metallic bonding. That is positive metal ions in a sea of electrons. Let's go into the sea. Sometimes it's ordered, sometimes it isn't. It's a strong sort of bond because there's that tough guy again, but he's a robot, he's metallic. And he seems to be adding another sort of atom that would make an alloy. All right, now we're on to the four sorts of intermolecular forces between one molecule and another. So van der Waals is now the name for these four sorts of forces. Start with hydrogen bonding. That's not quite as tough as the other bonding, not quite as strong. Weaker is dipole-dipole. Weaker still, dipole-induced dipole. And the weakest you need to know are these London dispersion forces. That is the weakest of all the bonds. And they are intermolecular between one molecule and another. Oh dear. We'll get back to that. F, O and N. If hydrogen is bonded to an F, O, or an N, you're going to get hydrogen bonds. Type of rain is fond. That kid's playing too. So that's how I remember. Fond is rain and tie. F, O, and N. They're the most electronegative atoms that are small. So fluorine loves electron pairs in a bond. Fluorine loves the electron pair bond. Okay, so now they're going to have dipoles. These molecules... The electrons are not spread out evenly. The fluorine end is going to be a little more negative. And the hydrogen end is going to be a little more positive. So you can show it using this arrow. Uh, this is really clumsy. Oh, oh, it's not going to fit. Oh. Right, chuck that. Get rid of that. Doesn't work. Oh, almost got that guy there. So now. The negative, so now the slightly negative fluorine is going to attract the slightly positive hydrogen in the other molecule. And that's called a hydrogen bond. Oh, there's a chicken there. Arabic for rain is shitter, by the way. <laughs> Chlorine's going to pull the electrons in the bond over because it has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen. And this is pretty much the same. Except this is called a dipole-dipole attraction. It's only a hydrogen bond attraction if it's with fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. That's a little weaker than the hydrogen bonds. Next up, we have dipole-induced dipole. That can be an argon atom there. That white sphere is an argon atom. Let's chuck that away. 
And oh, I need the chicken. Hold on, get the chicken, get the chicken. Right, let me grab the egg. Because now the argon's going to be shaped like an egg. Let me ship. Get another egg. Let me show you what that looks like. So the fluorine, since that's negative now, a little bit negative, delta negative, it's going to push the electrons and the argon to the other side. So it's now not going to be a sphere, it's going to be an egg shape. This side's a little negative because the electrons have been repelled, leaving that side a little positive on the left. And we have the bond, dipole-induced dipole. Like with every bond before, something positive attracts something negative. That's called an electrostatic attraction. And finally, on to London dispersion forces, the fourth of the four types of van der Waals bonding. London buses, three at a time. Always the way, isn't it? All right, these are two atoms of helium. So the electrons are going to go around the helium, around the nuclei. On the left and on the right-hand side, they're going to go around as well. Not particularly exciting. Ah, but if the electrons happen to be on one side of the atom, then what they're going to do, just for an instant, instantaneously, is there's a chance they're going to repel those electrons to the other side. It's like there's a slight increase that that's going to happen. And voila, you have a London dispersion force right in the middle. That positive nuclei is next to the negative electrons, next to the positive nuclei, next to the negative electrons, well, that's an electrostatic attraction, just like everything else. A plus is next to a minus. Not a very strong bond, it's very weak. I'm right in the middle, I can't feel anything. Can't feel my feet, can't feel anything. Alrighty. And since that only lasts for an instant, and is the weakest of all of them, the electrons soon go back into their paths. I'm assuming the Bohr model here, where the electrons go around on those nice orbitals. And that is the seventh type. So Dr. Atkinson is trying to do some electrostatic experiments here. He's got a balloon. He's going, to try, he's going to try and give that a charge. Now, everything's going to be OK, as long as there isn't another massive charge build up somewhere else. Oh, dear. Electrostatic repulsion. Negative repels negative. 